In our last session, our heroes began by sneaking into a ritual being performed by veggie pygmies on a captive grung named Imbok. The invisible Creed and Uncilian quickly released Imbok, revealing themselves and starting a battle with the small plant folk and their thorny pet. Utilizing some quick thinking and summoned owls to Zala, quickly dispatched their foes by having the owls snatch the veggie pygmies and drop them into the lava below. Using her leeches, Uncilian probed the grung probed into the grung's memories to learn that he is a favorite son of the chief and that his that this grung has been captured while on a mission to attack the snake people. Free from the clutches of his previous captors, Imbok, afraid for his life, is unable to speak the common tongue, but agrees to exchange gold for safe passage back to his village. Using Tazala's summoned owls, the group flies around the Great Rift on the way to the Grung village. While in flight, the group spots some more landmarks and eventually notices that some snake people have spotted them near the palace and that they are being pursued by two gray flying creatures with devilish faces. The group decided to land and prepare for battle. What do you do? Look at my character sheet. <laughs> yeah. There. I'm sorry. Those those guys are still flying towards us, right? They are. How long do we have with the uh, owls? I. What was that? How long do we have with the owls? Uh, long enough for this combat. Noise. I kind of want to just like prepare an action. Yeah, just what do you want to do? Yeah, I just I want to get ready for these guys to to like land, and if if I notice that they're, I I I already I like personally sense that like they're uh, chasing after us for uh, uh, the intention like because of bad intentions, but I'd like to see if I could check that and make sure that that is the right perception. Um, and then I just want to get my shield and warhammer out and ready to uh, hit these dudes whenever they land. <clears throat> Same for the owls. I want to have them like in a swirl pattern, bracing for battle. Their murmuration. Okay, so I'm gonna put y'all on. A little makeshift battle map. Yeah, I, I'd like to also um, prepare an action, like even though it's not not very not a real like roleplay way to say it, but basically, shortly before combat ensues, like before initiative begins, I'd like to cast enlarge on myself if that's possible. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and if you drop, if you cast a spell, drop it into the chat. Um, yeah. If you're preparing anything in particular that requires a, a stat block or text, drop it in the chat so we know what's been used. And you can position your tokens as you like. The, the boxes you see are, are buildings that you can uh, move around and take cover around. If you want to be on top of or inside of them. Any thoughts? Just like the nearest one, take take cover. Ooh. He said bless. Uh, why don't I see? Panic, Our leech girl. 
I'm sorry it took me a bit because my browser hates me for some reason. So no. Large. Oh. Well. No. <laughs> Make this one large. Yes. Thick leech time. <laughs> so you wanted your owls to be in like a or like a circular swirly pattern? feet in the air okay so first they have to drop you off and then they boot on back up into the air I hope this is smart and I really okay everyone I'm good totally. yeah and then I'd say so, like, yes. are there doors uh, in these places <clears throat> yeah we'll say that you can find an opening crack in the building I forgot Whatever what the wanna, actual you know that. term is, but like, you know, half cover, or whatever. I'll, I'll be like in a, a doorway. We're just kind of braced. Oh, and I, I suppose. Uh, so th that's what they're doing. I will have kind of. Should I summon in Yoka? I'll wait. Um, just like a thorn whip prepared if, if anyone's in proximity. That's it. Okay. Oh, and I'd, I'd, I'd also like I kind of forgot that I had it to be honest like at the same time when I enlarge myself I'd also like to uh, use the property of the insignia of the parasite to extend my melee range and okay. uh, get a little bit of extra damage on my attacks and okay. I like both uh, this property and the spell last a minute so Let's just say they expire at the same time. Does that... Uh, we have a second token for you. Do you want to pull oh, that yeah. one out? Yeah. I'm gonna take that. <clears throat> for the... <clears throat> well, never mind. <laughs> Let me see. Okay, so select your tokens. We'll roll some initiative. Come on, come on. Mm. Ooh. Nice. Coming in hot, Creed. Always. It gives me a lay of the land before... Um, I know what to... I'll let everybody do all of their stuff before. I'm getting there. Just need Tazala's actual... Not giant owl. Yeah, where's the... Oh, never mind. At the top, yeah. Oh, and I forgot our... Imbok. <laughs> Scott. Uh, yeah, Imbok is, is basically going to seize uh, Ancillion change and is going to zoom on into the building with Tizala hiding behind. Can I, can I change? <laughs> like, so I targeted myself and like everybody except for the Imbok with Bless. Can I just give him my Bless instead? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. As you guys hit the ground, you know, do a little tumble, look up, you know, start start scattering along the ground. You can see as uh, the eager, or as the great owls dropped you off and then began their ascent, as soon as they got up to to about 60 feet off the ground, you can see boom, boom, big two big puffs of uh, of feathers as these creatures rocket into two of your owls and you see the, a great tussle so this is going to be a uh, not necessarily a surprise round but 
this is how we're going to start the initiative is as the gargoyles hit yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple of, of vowels. So we're going to roll some attacks for them. So first is a bite and claw attack. Um, what's the AC on these guys? 12. 12. Okay. So just the first one hits for 11 piercing. And we'll say it's on this one here. And then the second one's going to come in with the same thing. And only hit on the claw attack. Uh, so, and that's going to be on this one up here. And the the sheer weight of these creatures sends the owls tumbling, uh, we'll say, 30 feet lower before they're able to get their wings back out and, and catch themselves. Okay. And now we have, now we'll start our initiative. Uh, let me put this ascending, or sorry, descending. Okay, Uncillion. These guys are currently thirty feet off the ground. Okay, the <clears throat> the building next to me is how high is that? Each building is uh, probably 20, 25 feet. So if you were able to get up on top, I think with your current reach, you would be able to reach uh, this one up here. Mm -hmm. So this one, yeah. Um, yeah. Then that's what she do. Um, basically just uh, jump to the side of the building and uh, ascend with spider climb until within uh, fifteen feet reach. Okay. Um, yeah. And then with like the manifested uh, big leech, she would. Uh, attack this guy twice. Roll your attacks. Oh yeah, and also bless apparently. Stay Twenty-six and a twenty-one. Both of those hit. Then um, damage. Is your are your leech attacks considered magical? They are. Okay. Um, it was a. Yeah, and that is plus a D4 damage and a D6 force damage. So 10 points of uh, piercing damage and 2 points of force damage for the first attack. Okay. And, and 14 points of piercing damage and 4 points of force damage for the second attack. So 18. And... I'd also like to use my Vampiric Bite feature on the second one and um, take a buff of um, plus 14 to my next attack or ability score. How frequently can you use that? Because you used that on Imba pretty recently, didn't you? Yeah, I, I can do it uh, three times per day. So proficiency okay. times per day. So yeah, mark down a plus 14, you said? Yes. To your next attack? Exactly. Um, that's okay. that. So how does it, how do, so as your leeches uh, extend out and bite down on this gargoyle's stony flesh, how does that, uh, how do you picture that happening? Well, the first attack like is almost more like a whip and when the contact is made, there are also teeth biting in, but like they just, like the, the surface skin just uh, crumbles a bit off. And with the second attack, which is also more whip-like, it kind of wraps around and there's this short glow as like some kind of energy or magic, whatever, is tethered from it. Cool. Yeah. I see the teeth on the, on the token. I'm like, I think, uh, like drill. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like, like poor drilling. Like. <laughs> Is that it on your turn? Yeah. I think that's it. This a lot. Section. Seeing the gargoyles approach. Uh. I know the. <clears throat> Owls, I'm gonna have them like 
try to take these guys out, but um, I. We think. How close are they now? Thirty feet. They are thirty feet off the ground now. Yes. I don't think I have a weapon, so I think I'm just going to wait until... Actually, I got you don't have any, like, ranged cantrips? Sorry, I'm looking. I think, I think Produce Flame is the only really ranged one that druids have. D don't you also have Thorn Whip, which is, like, 30 feet? If it's 30 feet, I'm good. I, I didn't think it was 30 feet. I think it's 30 feet. Oh, and I got yeah. a sling, too. Nice. Yep. Uh, but Thor Whips, if, I, if oh, 30 yeah. feet, then yes, that. <laughs> Didn't know I could. <laughs> uh, Which one are you aiming at? Sorry. Uh, the one engaged with... Wait, where's the other one? No, the one over here by me. On okay. Staff. So you're not doing Staff of the Python. Oh, is that the... I thought that was the thorn whip. Sorry. Uh, oh, yeah. My bad. I hit... Um, we've done this before. Okay, I'm supposed to use this one. Sorry. Da, 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 da. Boom. Cool. 15 hits. 15 hits. Nice. I was like, oh, Nice. Crack. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna... Yeah chip away at this guy. And oh. are you choosing to pull him closer or leave him where he is? Leave him where he is. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> if I could push him, that'd be even better. And that's it for now. And I'll hang out there in the doorway. Okay. Uh, next up is the gargoyle's turn again. And they are going to continue their uh, grapple against the the owls, trying to rend them from the sky. Uh, first one, he says 12 to hit, or yeah. 12 AC. Yeah. The so first one, eight piercing, and then uh, claw for 17 slashing. Which one? I think this? that... So this is the first one up here. Okay. Four, eight, I think that pop boosts it out of existence. The first one, he's still good. I mean, not great, but... Well, eight and then 17. Oh, the same guy? Yeah. Yeah, he's... Because he they, they got multi-attack. So it's biting <laughs> and clawing. <laughs> he exploded it. So, yeah, this uh, this gargoyle bites into the, the owl's neck. And then using its claws, opens up the rib, the rib cage, you know, spilling out its innards and poofing it out of existence. Yeah. yeah. Uh, looks over to uh, Uncilian and in a uh, gravelly voice says something in a language you probably don't understand unless you speak Terran. Nah. But just kind of cackles, ha ha, looks at you with menacing eyes. And then the one down here is going to make its two attacks for 14 piercing damage on the bite. Again, similar, uh, but th these two, like, it's flapping and tussling, and it comes in and uh, bites the owl right on the right on the beak and rips off par uh, part of the beak. Throws it down to the ground. Brutal. Two and it's going to circle around a little bit. Still 15 feet off the ground. Or sorry, 30 feet off the ground. And that is all they can do for the turn. Next up, giant owls. Okay. I'm gonna 
and uh, I'm going to hoot up to the <laughs> sky. Uh, I, I want them to help their brothers. And hopefully this is like better than an attack. I don't think an attack's the best. So how, good. What, what's the best way for them to use the help action? So like if they combo these guys, uh, so like help them tackle, like pretty much just, yeah, so that they hopefully put them in a nosedive or something or like do the thing where you, you know, kamikaze to take out the guy with you. How could we? Oh, um, you know, like in this case, it feels your... like a like a grapple would be okay. the most appropriate because you're trying to like have them immobilize it and make it fall, right? Right, and then like go down with it, like, and then maybe try to peel off at the last second, but really the main goal is just like slam them right into the ground. Okay, yeah. Uh... I'd say just make a grapple check. And is that is could the could we do with advantage since there's like one doing that and one helping, one doing that, one helping or two helping? Uh, yeah, you could have like if you paired them up, you could have one help, which gives the other one advantage. Yeah, we'll but it, honestly, it's it's kind of a wash because if you just had both do it, then it's the same as having. That's true. If you roll one with advantage and two with not advantage, it's just, it washes out. So if we did one helper, two people doing it, you're still only helping. You can't use your action to help two, can you? It's only your action is to help. Right. So like if I'm if not there's sure. three owls can one use its action and two of them <laughs> try to grapple so that they're two of them rolling you know what I'm saying? i'd say so if you dedicate three owls per gargoyle it's just a success yeah nice okay we'll do that so three uh, three on one for both and like nosedive just trying to slam them into the ground okay uh yeah, we'll say we'll, we'll get we'll add some extra dam like fall damage since they're basically yeah. trying to to yeet it into the ground. Yeah. So roll. Uh, let's see, they're thirty feet off the ground. That would normally be three d six. So roll five d six nice. damage for each of these. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> okay. Average. Woo. <laughs> Okay, that's the first one. Roll it on the second. Hey! Okay, 23. Yeah, nice. Slam. Give him a slam. Okay, so as you do that, and these, these creatures throw it into the ground, they're a little... Cr like, the, the gargoyle hits the ground and... Uh, there's like a, a crater mark where it was, but then you see wings whoop, whoop, as it lifts itself up. Uh, they don't seem to have taken as much damage from the bludgeoning, but definitely did take good damage. Cool. And now they are on the ground. So sorry if anybody didn't want that, uh, <laughs> didn't consult. <laughs> but Creed, I'm sure you did. So no, like they're on the ground now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Creed, okay. Creed, go smash. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, next up is Imbok, who is going to... Uh, I don't actually think he has a weapon, so he's going to continue to hide Go slap somebody. <laughs> I don't think his poisonous skin is oh, going yeah, to affect like these stone those. creatures. Yeah. <laughs> Green. He's gonna, get, he's gonna get sore from that. <laughs> yeah, it hurt his hand. I 
think I can move here. Like, are these owls like in a place They're where above. I can like? They're flapping move? above. Okay, so I can kind of move underneath. Can you move me? Like, can you pull me forward on this. Yeah. Thanks. All right, cool. That also works. So I'm gonna go to this dude, and I am going to um Warhammer. Yes. Uh, thirteen misses. Okay. But technically, <gasps> these guys, these it's that it wasn't their turn yet, so they couldn't have stood up. So it is prone right now. So you have advantage. Advantage. Um, but you still, you rolled again and it still missed. Do you want to take that as a miss? Okay. So oh, then now I'm, you can I'm do your second attack with advantage. Okay. Yep. Well, that one worked hits, out. But you can roll again if you want to see if you crit. Oh no, never mind. It, no, nope. it rolled with advantage. I, I rolled advantage on that yeah. one. Okay. Um, so, and then I'm going to do a level two smite on this thing. Okay. And what, um, what's your weapon that you're using? Just a, is it just a regular Warhammer? It's a Warhammer plus one. Okay. The uh, that's already the damage on it, right? The so it, it did seven damage. Yes. The yep. the rolling one d ten. I'm not sure what that. Oh, that's the two hand damage. So yeah, it's seven damage. Now roll your smite damage. Okay. Now, if I can figure out how to do. I, w I wish there was a better way of like clicking smite in here. In roll twenty, there should be. We've got the extra attack. I mean, I don't think it's in my spells. Find smite. No, it's not in. Oh yeah, there no. it is. Is that it? No. E well, I mean, we can fix it. Uh, we'll, we'll fix that in post. Okay. Uh, for now, just roll. You said level two, right? So just yep. roll three d three d eight. And actually, these creatures are okay. Yeah, it's just three d eight. And they're. Do they take extra damage because they're like undead? Or... No, I, I was just checking that and no, they don't. Okay. So I think that would be 12 radiant damage that they so would get. Seven bludgeoning plus 12 radiant. All right. And that would, I think, be my turn. Uh, well, let's, let's narrate how this smite happens. Um, you hit it all that so i see like the owls bring this this uh gargoyle down and uh i kind of just like make a like a running charge at at this one in particular because it's just in my line of sight uh, at the time and as i'm like running i like i just kind of like cock back my warhammer with my shield i get behind my shield and i like go to like make a attack on it and I just kind of whiff and it kind of like dodges dodges away from from my my hit and then like as I miss that one I just come back with like a backhand to it and just knock this thing like square in the back of the head and then like you know I call upon my god and the, there's just like a huge bolt of lightning that comes down and strikes it like straight down yeah. the back of the neck and through yeah. its spine. Ah, yeah. The cracks form all throughout its body. Still still um, alive, but nearly shattered from that one hit. Nice. He's emotionally shattered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cries in Terran. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Ancillion. Yeah, Ancillion would like see that and like turn away from the guy to look at that and like 
whilst doing that, um, like, wander down the wall to be next to him. I think he's still prone, right? Uh, both of them are prone, yes. Yeah. So she would get uh, next to him. And while still, like, kind of looking at this uh, spectacle of light, uh, the tentacle would, like, reach over and down on this creature and kind of disperse on top of it as she casts Inflict Wounds at third level. Yes. Which is a melee spell attack, which means because he's prone, I get advantage on that. Yeah. Cool. So, let's see. This is advantage. That definitely Check. hits. Yes. Um, yeah, and that would be, I think, for, yeah, 5d10 necrotic damage. Uh, that's Woo! 28 points of Woo! necrotic. Oh, but that's only three dice it rolled for some reason. No, it did not. Yeah, it, it rolled 3d10. Yeah, and oh, but it also says uh, 2d10 oh, up above. Damn. I almost rolled maximum. Almost max, a, yeah, jeez. A 9, a 10, a 9, a 9 and a 10. Oh my god, I think I've never rolled so high on any spell it's ever. A meaty third level spell. <laughs> Damn. Is he still alive? Yeah, yeah, that, that definitely <laughs> expires it. So yeah, narrate that. Woo! Yeah, so like she she still turned away and looks at the radiant spectacle with her head cocked. So like <laughs> from Creed's perspective, like he hits it, glows, like lo looks at his comrades, like and sees her looking at him, the tentacle reaching out and just with this burst of necrotic energy disintegrating the thing next to her without like really looking. Awesome. Yeah. That's the word I'd use. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay. Anything um, else you're doing? That's the action. I'd say just by doing that, uh, she inspires Creed to one-up her and uh, gives, her a, uh, g gives him a bardic inspiration. Yeah, and then action. the DM is going to give you inspiration for that max roll oh, damage. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Sweet. Actually, Tazala, I, 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 don't, I don't think you'll ever really use these because I keep track of them because no. I give them to you <laughs> if I can. Um, but Tazala <laughs> with the, with the um, aerial owl move also inspiration yes the, the, the maximum slam ballet yes okay next up to zala oh shit uh Roombeer hides. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I would get. I, I'll keep the thorn whip going. I can reach him, right? I, th I think I can reach. Uh, yeah. Yep, you can reach. I got thorn whip. Hoping to. 17? 17 hits. Six piercing. Yeah. Six piercing. Not Ooh. quite able to kill it. He watches like. Are you uh, are you pulling it away from Creed? Uh, yes, I am. And all these owls. <laughs> what might that mean? <laughs> I, it doesn't. So force movement like that doesn't provoke opportunity oh, damn. attacks. Okay. That's what well, you're then, hoping. Yeah, Creed. What do you think? Nah, I'll leave him there. Nah. He should be with Creed. Okay. <laughs> this gargoyle that is on the ground in front of Creed stands up 
looks him square in the eye and roars and lunges at you. Bite and claw attack. Do I get to do I get to use my uh, prepared action <laughs> from way earlier? <laughs> oh shoot, I forgot about that. Sorry, man. Uh, what, no, so, right. sorry. What was your prepared action? I was I was gonna like I I was gonna attack these guys with with my warhammer, but since they were since they've been flying, oh, like well, I really because couldn't that, do anything. That turn yeah. happened and you weren't in range. Your prepared yeah. action just didn't trigger. Exactly. But anyway, both of the bite and the claw action or bite and claw like totally whiff on me. Uh, well. It, narratively, he uh, flaps his wings to lunge towards you. Yeah. But then you raise your shield and just completely like shrug him off and throw him, throw him over you. And so he he ends up over here. Uh, and that's all he can do on his turn. Sweet giant owls. Let's see anything clever. <laughs> could let's see how much ground could they cover if they tried to do their three on one thing again? well shit we can do six on one oh. <laughs> six on one this this gargoyle looks very hurt okay we're just gonna do like uh, kind of a bird frenzy of feathers flying everywhere uh, like how close is he? <laughs> They're all gonna swarm in. Roll, roll me some attacks. Yeah. Let's do it. Just start with start with a few. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah. What's ba, what's ba, the damage ba, ba. on those? So that'll be eight. Yeah, that does first. it. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so narratively, I want, I want to, I want them to have, uh, like maybe two or three of them, the first two or three, uh, grab him all with talons. So that's six talons on him and then yank him up toward the, toward, uh, like 20 feet up in the air. And then the rest of them now circle back and they're coming downward and they kind of drop him. And for a second, the gargoyle is like, Oh, okay. And he starts flapping his wings, but then zoop, 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 zoop. like the other one's just like. Rip them into shreds, and the only uh, rocks fall from the sky. Down, he shatters into a thousand pieces yeah, as they all guy. rip into him. Suckers! All right, nice. <sighs> so the battle ensues, and then all goes quiet as you guys realize there's no more pursuers. You're relatively close to like Imbok pokes out his head and then kind of gestures this way and begins to hop northward and we'll go back to the Umu map Okay, so Imbok uh, is now leading the way on foot, and it actually doesn't take very long at all for you guys to to make your way beyond uh, a first set of buildings. But as you do, as you get to about here, roll me some uh, perception checks. I just um, I just use the bonus I could have used, like from my um, vampiric bite on this. So you get a thir- thirty-eight plus. Uh, I think it was plus fourteen. Or did, yeah, do I just remember that? Because you rolled a twenty-four. Oh yeah. Okay, so Uncillian looks into the future and uh, as 
you guys are looking around, you're getting a lay of, of where you are and, and what is in front of you. And in front of you, you can see the, the ground gives way to water again. And there's a temple up ahead of you. But right now you're in between these four buildings. And Ancillion just has this feeling. And a... No one else sees it, so a... Uh, four arrows shoot down from over top of y'all and lands at the feet of Tazala and Creed. But Ancillion instinctively juts out her leeches and catches two arrows mid-flight in front of her. And you hear Imbok kind of... He, he like, juts out his neck. <laughs> and he starts looking up and then begins holding out his hands. And then you start to see some green heads poke their poke their heads over the the rooftops and you hear a response <laughs> and then slowly imbok begins to to walk forward and uh, eventually jumps frog jumps into the water and then you see his head pop up out of the water and he gestures you to, to continue forward. What are y'all doing? Do we follow them? Do we want to go for the gold payment that was promised? Maybe we can see if they will give us the gold for bringing this guy back. So following it is then. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Okay, so we'll move over to... Nang Nang's Shrine. All right. So y'all are down here. beer over here so y'all should be able to see there that's better vision and Imbok is currently swimming towards the entrance here and you notice also wallowing in the water is another grung but it is of the uh, it's an orange color but also spotted. And you can just kind of see its head just peeking up above of, above the water, wallowing there. You see Imbok come up to it. And they Imbok passes on beyond the the one that's wallowing there just kind of gives it a nod. And then looks to you, the group that is following. We're with him. Ribbit. Well, I could read their thoughts and see what they think, but that doesn't really give us a way to talk back to them. But I mean, that is something. <clears throat> when and so, um, go ahead. Yeah, I'd say like she she would concentrate on like the the pests already living in those creatures, and just with that cast detect thoughts. Are you casting it on the the grung in front of you? No, it's 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 a cast on yourself, so you can just within thirty feet read thoughts as an action. Oh, okay, yeah. So you you catch apprehension from the 
Grung in front of you, mm-hmm. but acceptance. Like it, it, you're not getting an aggressive feeling from it. Okay. Uh, yeah, she she would just share that he does not seem to like want to attack us or like hold us back. He seems to be cool with us more or less, even though we are big and scary. What's everyone doing? Uh, like she would Who's look making the, the first move? So do we just proceed inside? They don't seem to like hold us from doing so. You're not getting any of that from, from your detecting of thoughts. Mm-hmm. No resistance. When they were speaking I to each other... I'll... Yeah, I think let's go inside, you guys. Let's just uh, head in and see what happens. Yeah. But see, like, Imbok... I don't think any of these are going to be unfriendly. We're bringing this guy back. Inbox skirts around actually the entrance of the uh, of the shrine and, and heads off to the side, where a other grung is currently sitting on the back of a hadrosaurus with a little bit it's like it's got a little saddle on the back and he's just kind of he's sitting there um almost as if that's his his uh throne and you see this grung is gold colored and has uh, some fine adornments on him. And as Imbok approaches, again, you hear, and then you hear in response in a, in a deeper voice, and uh, kind of pats him on the shoulder and then looks to the group. And you see it. What are y'all doing? I'm going to wave at the dude. Because I have no idea what he's... Like, in a friendly way. <laughs> Hello! Does, does he, he, he gestures back to you. Does Tazala not understand the toad talk? The toad speak? Um, it... Is a specific language to the Grung people. It's not just like frog speak. But, um, Ancillion, you are detecting thoughts. Yep. So you detect the emotion of gratitude and surprise initial surprise when Imbok was speaking to his father and then gratitude that Imbok is alive and then looks to you and then further gratitude <clears throat> um yeah she would share as much with the others and look to them for how to proceed. <laughs> well, well uh... so hmm? outside of the the waving, what are you all doing? Like how are you trying to communicate? Um, I don't know. I'm gonna like maybe pull pull a couple coins out of my hand and be like, 
point to the coins like like do you have any of these Seven. uh nice the the chief looks to the <laughs> coins in your hands and bows and then takes them from you thought yeah, so I saw that coming yeah, yeah that, that, that's peak <laughs> diplomacy here yeah I um at uh, that point Imbok and the, the chief kind of looks confused and then and then you, there's a little bit of a, a spat between the chief and his son but eventually the chief uh, begins directing his hadrosaur mount around y'all and starts heading toward the shrine where he then like he gets to here and he hops off and the hadrosaur continues around and Imbok follows the door opens and they begin to go in you can hear the the creaking of the door all the while there are other orange colored uh grungs that are wallowing in the waters around the shrine i mean this shrine also looks like it's somewhat important <clears throat> oh, which, of course, I forgot to give a description of the shrine. Yeah. Uh, let me provide that. A monolith adorned with prancing frog-like figures rise from the swamp. Beyond, a ruined edifice shaped like an arrowhead squats in the muddy water. Bushes and trees grow from its roof. At the pointed front of the building, steps ascend to a stone door caked in slime. So this uh, shrine is well traveled, but is covered in like frog slime. Goo. Y'all following inside? We got to do Let's what we got to do. do. It. <laughs> Grease up. Okay. Even even if they don't give us any gold, I think all of this looks pretty much important to our task. Maybe we can find something else that's helpful. Okay. So yeah, y'all head inside and uh you can see it's it's dimly lit with like little little torches uh here and there but for the most part the place is actually not very occupied you don't see any signs of people living inside of it but as y'all enter torches shed light over rooms filled with uh torches shed light over rooms Filled of treasure chests heaped with coins. Polished amphorae. I don't know what that word means. Rings of pearls and ornate pieces of armor. Set into the floor in front of another double door straight ahead of you is a mosaic depicting a frog-like humanoid beating a leopard that has snakes emerging from its shoulders. Ooh. Cuneiform inscriptions are woven above and below the combatants. And amphorae is like a sealable vase that's used in like Greek, old Greek and mm. uh, Roman times to contain wine and stuff like that. Oh. Thank you for that. Yeah. Nice. Uh, <sighs> so... You, the doors that you see in front of you, Tizala, these doors are closed. You cannot go through them. Mm. But that is where you see the uh, the depiction ahead of you. 
So everywhere you look in here, outside of the room that Tazala's in right now, is just heaped with treasure. And you see Chief Yorb, uh, he's like standing there proudly. And you hear him croak. What does my detect thoughts give me on this croaking? <laughs> uh, detect thoughts would, would give you or initial reluctance, a sense of greed in that he doesn't want you to take a lot. But then you also get a hint of uh, confusion, I guess. He doesn't mm -hmm. quite know what's going to happen. Okay. Yeah. Um, she would share this with the others and add to it. Um, maybe it's best if we look around to see what we find until we, we're sure what we're going to take. Because I, I'm pretty sure if we just start, like, sacking things here, what like everything we see immediately we're gonna have to fight our way out of here which i'm not a completely against but <laughs> that's not really why we came here but it is more wealth than any of you have probably ever seen in your lives like you know the 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 vault room in gringotts when Harry Potter is trying to like find the the chalice like it is just heaps of gold and jewels and yeah, all that stuff I guess I'll take a look around to see if there's anything special among the gold like or is it pretty much just gold 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 like magic well, items wise. Uh yeah, you can you can do an investigation of of the rooms to see if you can find any like magic items. Yeah. I will do that. And if anybody else wants to, I will guide you in doing that. And just like the other two shrines that you were in, there there is writing around like the door that Tazala's nearby. The one that had the uniform inscriptions. Um. <clears throat> uh, your investigation, you, you definitely see, like, it's not hard to find that there are like polished, nice armor sets and swords yeah. and uh, jewelry. Nothing in particular is striking you as magical, but you would need to have some sort of magic to determine that. Ah, okay. Hmm. Uh. Dang. Uh... Yeah, we're not like and it's really so attack and, and steal like right now I don't think it's this move, but, uh, it's a whole, whole town of grunts there I mean you get the feeling that you can take you will not be attacked you take some oh that's what Cillian, I'm assuming recounted yeah the detecting of thoughts okay uh Like, and we'll say as part of your investigation, you, if you look at the uh, the door, you being the only one who can read Old Moo and uh, would have read around the door, uh, Nang Nang teaches us to serve only ourselves. Serve ourselves. And then underneath the door, uh, there is a note. It 
Sorry, hold on. Gotta find the line. Uh, whom, whomever among you is the richest, bring me your gifts. Do you shed it with the rest? Oh yeah, no, I'm like reading it out loud. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll just as he's as he's reading this, I'm like, what what could this mean? And I'm like, I'm definitely not the richest. <laughs> is, hmm. is anyone here have money? The only thing I could think of that there's something among these riches that is like more valuable than the rest, maybe. Maybe that's something that the that we have to bring here. Really, the other thing with the statues kind of confused me. This could also be some contrivance right. in a general direction. M maybe we just quickly split up and look through all the riches, see if there's something like sticking out as particularly uh, valuable. Maybe that's gonna help. As you. As you're reading that out loud, uh, Chief Yorb sees you and walks over the door and puts his hand on it and pushes, but it, and it doesn't move. And Ancillion, you get this uh, emotion of longing and curiosity. And he pushes again and it doesn't budge. Hmm. He who serves himself. Put it in oh, the chat. Oh, uh, it's in there. Never mind. Yeah, I got it. Nang Nang teaches us to serve only ourselves. Among these riches, bring your gifts. Bring your gifts. It wants a gift. Okay. So, Zala will uh, go pick up. Are there like loose gold gold pieces spilling out of some of these piles? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, there's loose gold pieces everywhere. So I'm gonna go pick up uh, six pieces, and I'm gonna give three to Creed and two to Uncilian, and I'll keep one. And uh, Creed's the richest now. Uh, and if we could, <laughs> like, I'll put the bag of holding aside that has, like, the community bank. So we're all, like, at zero. We'll just effectively do that. Uh, What's everyone else doing while Tazala does that? I'd say Ancillion would look around and look for like something that looks like just stands out as something that would be way more valuable than the rest. Basically. Okay, roll investigation. This is Tradies. Can only be a shitty roll after the last one. Oh yeah, a six. <laughs> mm. What do, what would Uncilian consider to be valuable? Like, what are you looking for? Armor? Are you looking for a weapon? Or just a random item? I, I say probably she associates with, with like shininess. So probably if something is like crossing any kind of jewels or like is a big jewel of some kind. Will probably stick out for her. Sure, you can find a ruby 
that is the size of your fist. Pretty easily. Yeah. Then she will like, reach for that, like, grab it, and like, like, fling it, catch it again, and like, return to reconvene with the others in front of the door. Creed? I'm just gonna, like, case around and just go around the, the like, walls and, like, just look at all of the, um, um, just all of the, you know, and see if there's something, something that sticks to me as well. I know that's kind of like what Encillian did, but. Okay, what sticks out to you? What are you looking uh, for? I think what I'm going to be looking for is just, um, I don't know. I, like, I don't think there's, I, there's not really weapons in here. Is that right, Josh? There are. Is, there, are. there are. I would probably say, I, I would be like looking for like some type of potentially magical like shield or something like that, that I could potentially use. Um, and then something of value that I could give to, um, I can't remember the, like I can't remember the like types of creatures they were, but like the the guys that were gonna help us out and give us the kobolds. Us some, yeah, the kobolds. Something to like try to appease them. Okay, so like some sort of tribute to the Heracles horde. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so yeah, you you go over into this room over here. And you find a very shiny shield, polished, uh, got a got a sheen so nice on it that you can see your reflection in it. Damn. I will fling that on my back. Okay. And then where do you go after that? Uh, I guess I'll kind of like go up here is there anything in here that would be of like i know all of this would be essentially of value to the kobolds but is there something that kind of like stands out that like i could um take take away from here that wouldn't be like completely burdensome but also like just like big and shiny and really appeasing to to those kobolds i mean you saw in the kobolds little treasure hoard that they did had it it was mostly coins yeah there weren't a lot of jewels and like precious uh vases and artwork and stuff like that it was mostly like the mound of coins that they were building upon were they all gold in that in there it, it was a big mix a so... lot of it was actually of smaller denominations so is there like a small like little treasure chest that I could like fill up with coins and just like yeah sock you away? could definitely get yourself a little chest of coins for sure okay so I think I'm gonna do that okay so back to Sean who distributed three two and one coins well I mean that so. Well, Ancillion has a giant ruby now, so that idea doesn't work. So, uh, th what I was going to have the richest person try to open the door while hmm. the poorer of us are next to him. <coughs> maybe it's maybe it's more literal. So, just the one who has something is rich; everyone else is poor. So, yep. like when we reconvene. Um, and Selene would just say, I don't really know about this door, but I don't feel like we should leave here without it being open, so... Like, I don't know. If you don't have any ideas, the only thing I could think of to, like, pile the stuff that we have in front of it, that we found so far, maybe that's gonna open it. And she's just basically gonna like gesture the two of you to give her the stuff that you found. Yeah. So 
to see if that does anything. So, everyone's given their stuff to Uncillion? Yeah. I guess. I don't know. I mean, yes. I can't think of anything better. I don't know, I don't know what's going on. Okay, Creed, do you follow along? Sure. Everyone gives all of their treasure to Uncillion in front of the door. She buckled under the weight of like the shield and the coin uh, chest and like I okay. like, carry around and look if something happens. And uh, when you do that, the door <laughs> opens up in front yeah. of you. Well, there you go. Would you take the back of it really heavy, please? <laughs> Grab it from him. And inside, <laughs> you see, in the middle of this dusty room, that is completely unadorned and unfilled with treasure. A stone cube rests on a pedestal, carved and painted to resemble a squat humanoid frog. Hey. Yeah, she she would go up to it and um, like with the leech, um, take it like with uh, like suction from above, like lift it up slowly to see if anything else happens. Uh, you are able to remove the cube with no... Uh, nothing happens in the room. Mm -hmm. But as that... As you do that, Chief Yorb... Steps into the room. And points to the cube. What does Detect Thoughts give me? On uh, greed, and that's my cube. This is my. See, you know, I I don't know what he he's like, he's a, he. You get the feeling of FOMO, like he doesn't know what that cube is, and he, but he wants it. See, now we're gonna have a problem. Okay, um, <laughs> it is an object, right? It is an object, yes. Would you allow me to cast invisibility on it? To just make it disappear nice. in front of his eyes. I well, I mean, yes, of course you can cast invisibility on the object, but how are you doing it? Because you have to cast a spell to do that, and he's watching you do it. I mean, like, I'm I'm unsure of if he understands spell casting, and if if he does. It's not that likely that he knows specific specifically what I'm doing. So I like combine two things by well I still have like this leech out that like comes from my body that holds the cube, like just from above. So my hands um like move and I do the spell gesture and the cube disappears. Like the 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 leech is still there and moving, but the thing is no longer visible. And she would turn to him and just like make more leeches under her skin move and in her face and like just try to intimidate him basically <laughs> with okay. body horror. <laughs> Roll intimidation. Yippee Come, on, come, on. come on. I need it. 21. <laughs> okay. Uh, Chief Yorb kind of looks at you and then looks at the the things that are underneath your skin and and kind of looks back to Imbok and Imbok uh, kind of responds meekly and like uh, gesturing to the uh, you know all the treasure and Trying to, but you talk. have so you, much. You get, yeah. yeah, but like as 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 <laughs> as just to, just to say that like as invisibility is cast. Um, oh, you lose the tech thoughts. thoughts. Yeah, Father, this drop. is precisely why Omu fell in the first place. Father, <laughs> Father, I implore you. <laughs> I mean, that is essentially the the gist you're getting. Yeah. But uh, Chief Yorb looks unhappy, but 
backs away. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, and Sylvia slowly, like, as it's to I'll put the invisible view somewhere in uh, in her crate that she carries. And I think um, at this point, I, I like, as I'm seeing this, I'd say, like, we need to start heading out of here. Like, let's try to get out of here. Yeah, she would also, like, side mouth. If you need anything else, maybe, um, grab it on your way out. We should leave. Yes, I'm gonna open the bag of holes and just kind of drag it on the ground. <laughs> Scooping up as much coal as I can. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And, like, Kept saying thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you on my way out, but like that. So you make it look like you're bowing, really, yes. you're just scooping up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are you, you're you not doing it in a sleight of hand way, right? It's like very obvious that's what you're doing. <laughs> I cast pass without trace and then the scoop. No, I literally could. I wonder. I and mean, that doesn't help you if they're, if they're looking at you. Damn it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> then I'm going to not really. Uh, I, I have an idea. But it is like your contrivance with that spell. The spell does not only give you plus 10 to stealth checks, but it also um, basically removes any traces you leave. So you could say as he scoops up from the floor, the spell might pull in the coins from the left to the right from, uh, <laughs> to close the gap okay. he leaves. So it's not obvious. Yes. And I want to I be like very loud and... and uh... <laughs> Express my gratitude, like you know, Cillian was detecting earlier. Just thank you, thank you so much. Okay, if you cast pass without a trace and you're dragging that along, <laughs> uh, make, uh, make it just make me a general performance check as you're doing this. Oh god, that's I mean, that read without a trace. <laughs> just a fun. Uh, this is not gonna be good. It's not IDC. I just want to see how well you do it. Plus two. Eh. Yeah, you make a big show of. of Saying your thanks, <laughs> but also being a charlatan. Yes, in the best way. Okay, y'all make your way out downtown. Yes. How much did I uh, scoop up? You'll have to figure that out later. Okay. <laughs> Good scoop. Uh, so, are you just kind of booking it out of there, trying to get to dry land again? Yeah. Get away from those weirdos. Okay. Then let's head back to the map. Okay. Y'all are back on dry land. No longer with Imbok. What are you doing? Creed, from your, from your bird days, do you remember where the next closest shrine is? Or do we have a map? We have a map. Um, you got it. They're all marked on your map. Yeah, map. Oh, wait, no. You don't have a map of Omu. You know where oh. a map of Omu is. No, we have uh, one at least, as far as I remember last session, I think. Um, one was drawn up. Like Oh, that's right. That's one, right. right? Uh, Caracol helped you draw yeah, yeah. A, ru <laughs> a rough map. So, so I, I don't specifically, like, I mean, obviously, like, I can look here, but what, um, we're going to have to, like, we skirt past the bottom of this, Josh, where 18, like, 18, 19 are, can we squeeze through there, or is that several Yeah, there is a, there's a space for you to go around the outside of the building there, yes. So, if you guys want, why don't we just, like, start heading down there, also, like, you know, Sean, I don't know if you need a long rest, but I think I think it may be worth it for us to probably find a place and have a long rest. Just uh, so big yes. Like you get your spell sets back. I don't know what you're like. At least you're, a short rest. Like, a short rest it is uh, but yes, long rest. The, the time of day is that like it's approaching dinner nice. time. Nice. Like it's not quite dark, but it's the the day is coming to a close. So you could spend your time trying to find somewhere to bed down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that would probably be the best thing for us. How do I ping on the map? Just a long right click. Long. Oh, right click? Or left click? Left. Oh, sorry, left click. My bad. So, so why don't we try to go to like? Can we move to the building right here and like just like see if there's anything 
weird or anything like that. So nearby where you guys fought the gargoyles? Yeah. Yeah, you can you can go try and find a shelter over there. What do you guys think? Yeah. So let's just try to find like something that has a few doors and windows. Roll Josh. me a survival check. See if you can see how good of shelter you can okay. Pretty damn good one. Good. Wow. So Yeah, you're you're able to find a a building that has only <laughs> one opening <laughs> with a you know, you find a piece of wood nearby that you can kinda of bar the door. But it's not perfect. Yeah, not perfect. I would think we got a like we found a La Quinta with a good mini bar there. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're frogs mi mixing the drinks, not asking questions. Fortunately, <laughs> most of the buildings in this area are fairly ruined. Uh, yep. Well, yeah, they look, to, they look to mostly be just the homes of like ruined homes of old Omuans. Mm. These are a little bit nicer homes because they are so close to the palace. Yeah. But ruined nonetheless. So okay. I want to like, just like look around, get get like see if I can find some firewood, you know, um, and then go back to like the shelter that we had. Uh, I'm not gonna venture off very far, like at least where like I would still be ear shy, ear shot, and then once I'm done, kind of like collecting, you know, some wood and stuff like that, I'm gonna go back to that shelter. And I'm just gonna like start a little bit of a fire and be like. Let's have, let's have a meal tonight, y'all. It's been a, it's been a, a minute. I'm like, even though Please. it's these, these ridiculous rations we got, like, let's just keep one of these things up for for a change. <sighs> Agreed. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my shelter is ruined. <laughs> yeah. Did you not want fire in the warmth? <laughs> <laughs> you, you see her kind of retract a bit from the fire, but also like. <laughs> Looking at the rations with a bit of disdain, she's like just shaking a bit. And it's like I'm all good. Yeah. Well, you know, I kind of like look over towards her and like it doesn't bother me, but you know, I'm sitting there. And I at least like try to offer Uncillian some food and Tizala's food. And I'm just gonna like chill and relax for a second and uh, have a meal. Yeah, I don't think Uncillian wants our food. I think, I think she wants like uh, a lot, some like uh, something a little fresher. And, and Cillian, would you like what would you prefer? Maybe we can find something for you. She had some grung earlier today. She had some grung oil. Yeah. Yeah. She she just lifts her hand and says, "I think I'm all good." Uh, Tazala's down, down though. Yeah. We haven't had a woman forever. We've been on I the know, run. Been while, We've been wet most of the time. <laughs> Let's find something. Uh, maybe we can find some meat, or make some meat. Yeah, I like take my I take my boot off and I just like smack it upside down, out of it. and like and there's just like a big clump of mud that just goes out of my boot. I'm like, gosh. Let me help with that. Mm. Like, she she flicks uh, her wrist and you see like from under it has this shower of little leeches just fall on your stuff, and like you, you get this ache immediately of like wanting to get them away from you and then yeah. they hurry off and they leave everything like pristinely clean she has to vegetate with it yeah <laughs> my character would have been like extremely terrified <laughs> as that as that happened but extremely full after it was done funny enough after you like take off your boot and try to like dump out the water and the mud and all that you lick your leg and there are harmless little leeches that are clinging onto you and currently enjoying a meal of their own that are uh -oh. not Uncillians uh -oh. but I would I would point to Uncillian would would I have known that they're not Uncillians I, I think no she, I mean when you she, when you took your boot off there were some leeches under your armor okay yeah. I think she would know I like as you say that she would also probably see that and she'd yeah. smile, and as you turned, I was like this shocked impression of like, did you just? And she would say, uh, oh, "I see you found some friends all by yourselves. These aren't even my friends." Yeah, and I would, I would ask like, "Is there any way that you can get these things off of me, without me like just like ripping them off of my the uh, scale?" 
I guess. Like, she, she would go over and just like with a with a finger, like from the point where they're attached to like the end of their southern body, just like drag her finger along gently and then tug on them a bit. And yeah, I'd say also using like Christian digitation, trying to like get them off without killing them, and then just absorbing them quickly if you let me. Like sardines. <laughs> yes, yeah, just join, join your new home. No. <laughs> Tizella, you also have leeches in your armor. Dude, so beer. Everyone who has completely <laughs> surged in the water has leeches on them. Wait, she, she, she would Don't, uh, none of you feel sick, like you did contract anything from them. But, uh, oh, all are bedding down for the evening. Just trying to chill out, have a little bit of a camp out. Be ready for them. Yeah, I'm gonna... a little life into, into uh, ourselves before we have to go out and trudge through this yeah. swampy area again. As soon as the fire starts going, uh, Zala will reach in and grab, you know, one of the logs to the, uh, the cool end and use the ember to start burning off leeches. You know, like, touch them and then they release. They ah! Freak out. They let go. It's yeah, the and, most and humane way. Uh, we're... Yeah, uh, and Cillian would look at this uh, not very pleased and would, like, judge you from a... No, I'm not killing them. I'm like, they, they get hot and they let go and they live to suck another day. Instead, well, you just know. let me do that. I get this, like, <laughs> image in my head of Men in Black where Will Smith is, like, oh, is your auntie? stepping on... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so your auntie won't start none, won't be none! Won't be none! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> And then, uh, do we have food? Do we have meat? Uh, I was gonna go on a little hunt in the water. <laughs> if again. Uh, just a little wild um, shape into a giant octopus. I can't if y'all have food in your bag of holding or not. I'm gonna tell Creed, yeah. I'm like, so, until then you're good, but room beer, Creed, and I, we're gonna get some, or I'm gonna get some food for us real quick. I'll be right back. And then I'm going to wake up in Yoka and transform into a giant octopus. And we are going to go into the water and try to find us something. I'm sure we can rustle up something. Even if just like a small crocodile. A small crocodile. <laughs> okay. I hear they taste like chicken. Or like taper. <laughs> are they taper? <laughs> so you said you're in this insane? Uh... Okay. He's doing it with Inyoka. Oh, Inyoka, sorry. Yeah. For the for the group. Just, real, just like a quick aside. Okay. So, while you're out, are you trying to do this in a stealthy way? Hunt without a trace. I mean, hunting, yeah. Kind of pre praying the whole time. Oh, as soon as we okay. you know, dip into the water, like, game on. Roll me a... Um, roll me a stealth check, and then roll me a survival check. Here we go. Oh no. Survival. Ow. No! <laughs> that one's a roll. So, Save my inspiration. Able... Oh, yeah, yeah, use your inspiration. Come on. Blow it. Blow it. It's gotta be better. <laughs> no, gosh. <laughs> uh, so you're able great. to get out, and so you immediately realize the, the area and the water in front of you is the shrine again. So there are grung everywhere. Um, you're not able to escape their eyes, but you keep a wide berth from their village and go out just beyond them into the, some of the deeper waters out there and uh, are able to quickly find a young crocodile that you use your tentacles to grapple and... Yes. Um, like it, it takes a while because like you just like essentially constrict it. To yeah, okay, yeah. With it's more like I'm helping in yoga. She does the most most of the heavy lifting here. We put the yeah. big squeeze. And part of the uh, the big um, reason that the grungs don't approach you is that in yoga is like you're like an octopus wrapped around in yoga's head, who's <laughs> slithering through the the water. <laughs> yes. Like, this is a very weird sight for them. <laughs> uh, and then eventually... It is, it is the snake. 
You, like, yeah. You, you want to tell the boss about this? No, we didn't see nothing. <laughs> yeah, on the way back, y'all uh, are able to, like, it's it's the same site, except now, this time, two of the tentacles are holding onto a crocodile on Inyoka's head, headed back. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, you're able to, to make your way back that incident. I'll just transform back as I slip off of Inyoka's head with the and wrangle it so that my my last thing to transform is like my right arm, it's still tentacle wrapped up, and I'm like dragging it up to the guys. Hey, I got I, I got something. It's okay, it tastes like chicken. So slap it. Actually down. It does taste like chicken. It does, it really does. So does rattlesnake. Uh, so Slap it down, and then hopefully the fire is nice and got it, got it going. And then we'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, arrange a little uh, rotisserie situation for our friend here. Get everything nice and toasty. Yeah. Okay. Is uh, Uncillian having her dibs and draining of its juices? Before? I like helping to prepare it. Me like she she feeds first. Yes, of course. Just leave enough, for, leave enough blood for flavor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, she, she just sits there, like, tur like, turned away from the fire with her eyes. Just, like, multiple of the bigger leeches just attached to the little crocodile. But she, like, uh, with her fingers, draws in the dirt on the floor. Not even really paying attention. You see, like, the, the <laughs> sucking motion for leeches. Cool. Nice. So, I'll... Make your camp some food. Begin to uh, set up for the night. How are we doing? Oh, do, do any of y'all look at your uh, look at your loot at that point? Ooh, I kind of want to see. I want to see my shield that I got, and I would like to equip that if that it was all at all possible. So, you guys take a moment to take stock of all the things that you grabbed. And Creed, you're the first one to like pull out your very shiny shield. Except when you pull it out and you look at it, you notice this is just a hunk of metal. It's not, it's not shiny at all. What? What and then Cillian grabs her, her ruby. Oh no! And it's a, it's a big lump of coal. Oh no! Oh no! And then you look at your chest, your chest of coins. And it's a chest, but it's filled with dirt. Dirt. And then you open up, you un, you, you know, take the bag holding and you put it all out. And there's just a bunch of slime that just pours out of it. We got slimed. I mean, this, this is way more useful. I'm gonna add to my inventory a lump of coal. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Well, I think this turned out way better than imagined. So, by any chance, would you? I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> would you? Would you maybe give me that dirt? I could use it. You can have whatever you want. <laughs> You're you can have dirt. The... Yeah, you can she, you can also have the piece of metal, <laughs> and Zillion, take whatever you'd like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, she, she looks at it and is like, I don't know, like, what I could use that for, but I need um, the dirt. And like, she she scoots over the the little chest that you prepared. Yeah. And like, you see, like, it's almost like little mouths open at her fingertips, and like masses of little uh, leeches just drop out, and then you see like all the dirt in the chest almost like move. And back and forth just from all of the life that's now in it. She looks happy at that. You get the feeling like she's using this as a kind of like crib, like for the small ones to play. <laughs> okay. Who's who's taking uh first watch or do y'all have anything that you, like RP wise that y'all want to talk about I would like to know how the crocodile came out perfect <laughs> good, good, good. perfectly cooked little dry 
Yeah, p please DM, do your best Gordon Ramsay right. impression. I, I'd i like to know, like, uh, you know, does anybody have any idea what happened with with the stuff that we took out of there? Like, it makes no sense. It's probably like an enchantment and on all the, the booty in that room. Does and anybody have a way of, like, detecting magic or something like that? I mean, I guess it's over, but... So maybe that won't help, but well, I can I can only end magic. I have ways to use little friends to disrupt spell casting. Oh, but, not, but uh, and Cillian, when you when you pull out the cube, that th that is still the cube. That oh, did nice. not change. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Not a slime. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't think. I, I think I would have just been confused, maybe a little bit pissed, um, but yeah. I don't think, I, like, there's nothing, there's nothing I can do about it, and, like, definitely gonna go Ooh. to the kobolds and be like, you shouldn't go in there. <laughs> maybe see if we could, like, I could have something as, like, evidence. Okay. What what evidence are you gathering? I don't know. Some of the slime or dirt, maybe. Just to keep keep something. I mean, that that one did not seem that bright, but I don't think that he's yeah. that dumb. I don't think he's I, like I don't think he's gonna believe us. You know. I don't know how to make him believe us, other than take him there and then have him walk out with, you know a coin or something like that so anyway maybe we don't need to use maybe we don't need his assistance at this point i think we should just get all the things done that we know so far and maybe on the way we'll find more yeah and if there's really anything more needed from him we could always like interrogate him yeah further. that's true Okay. Yeah, that's all I got. I say, you know. Um, is it getting kind of dark outside, Josh? It or? is. It is getting dark outside, yes. So I'd say, you know, I could take the first watch. If you and Sean want to take the second, yeah, uh, second the next one and the and the before, last, last before one. We could, could, uh, could we use this time of... Uh, all the stuff we're just doing. <laughs> could something count as a short rest before we enter longest mode? Whoa. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, you, we could say you took an hour to short rest while you guys were eating. Okay, cool. Needed that. <laughs> makes, my, makes my watch more comfortable. <clears throat> but yeah, second or third, I don't care. Or, or is room beer being included? Not in this case, no. Room beer is being a layabout and not wanting to cooperate. <laughs> So he's, too, he's too upset about all the missing loot. Right. Understandable. Okay, so. Who was first? Me. Yep. Roll me a uh, perception check for the night. Okay. Uh... Your watch goes by... I mean, you hear a few things outside over the course of your watch, but nothing seems to draw you outside of, you know, just generally watching the door. Uh, and your watch goes by fairly eventfully. Sweet. Who's next? Zala? Silly? I'd say Anselin would be next. Okay, roll me your perception. Please. Fuck. 
Uh, so you're a little absorbed in, in all the new friends that you found, and you're kind mm -hmm. of thinking about how you're integrating them within your your system that you got going on. Uh, and you don't, in particular, pay attention to what's happening outside. And this you hear sound. Oh, I know. Sound of rocks tumbling. What are you oh, doing? I'd, I'd say she would like go and have a look, just like peek if she can. If the if the opening is just barred, so like she if if she would had to like break open, she would uh, wake the other two to ask what to do. Um, I had said the door could kind of be barred, but not totally stopped unless you guys had made some sort of effort to completely bar the door. Yeah, I, I was unsure about that. That's what I'm asking. I don't think anyone said that they were that they did that in particular. Mm -hmm. So it's got a door in front of it, but it's not barred. Yeah, she, she would open the door then and have a look. If she sees anything outside. And you have good dark vision, don't you? Yeah. Yes. So as you look out and you kind of look around and to your right is a huge cliff that, that goes up into the darkness. And uh, off to your to your left, there is where you guys had come from. Nang Trine. You see kind of on the cliff side there had been some disturbance of rocks and you see the kind of a, a little bit of a dust plume that's rising up from the uh, from the ground over here but that's all you can see with your current perception um she would wait and see when the dust settles if there's anything that's moving the dust is, wasn't so thick that you like couldn't see through it you can just see the disturbance of air and and that there is dust in the air. But you don't see anything over there. Now I gotta decide it. Like a real tactical genius. Uh, she shrugs and like closes the door and sits back down. Good. Okay. <laughs> I wanna sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh so you sit back down and you're right. Okay, it was nothing, just something happened at night. Mm -hmm. And nothing else happens during your watch. Great. Like Tony would say. <laughs> then comes Tizala's watch. Roll me perception, Tizala. Okay. So as you're sitting in on your watch, you being acutely aware of uh, being able to speak with animals you hear the sounds of hissing outside but the, the sounds are too low and muffled for you to make any sense of, of what's being said Hissing like a snake, yes. Uh... <laughs> 
Can I... This could be dumb. It's probably dumb. But it's different. Can I uh, transform into a snake? And just like a small snake. And I'm going to try to infiltrate, like espionage, and get it, get it in on the snake speak outside. Okay. Um, what kind of snake? Uh, like a garden snake. Okay. The jungle equipment. So like a green, like a green, yeah. kind of like viper looking garden snake. Yeah, very small. Not not in, not in regular size constrictors. Just very long snake. You kind of need like little frogs and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, you transform and you're able to slither out the door without moving the door at all. And using your perception. You can determine the snake sounds are coming from uh, a like a, a set of bushes on kind of like the the corner over here and across the street, and the sounds are kind of bouncing between those two points. Uh, I don't understand any kind of. Speech or anything? Oh, the, so yeah, from this distance, if you kind of sit and you wait patiently, you can... The speech that you get from the snakes is the sounds of impatience. One of the, one of the snakes is... We wait. I hate waiting. And the other one, shut up. We have to wait. So, in an uncanny impression of the first guy's voice, I will say, yes, but what for again? Can you tell me what for one more time? <laughs> Make a <laughs> persuasion check. I don't know. I get. I guess this is deception. Yeah, make a deception check. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, oh no. Uh, here we go. Let's go. Okay. Uh, let me roll something for myself. Okay, uh, so you hear a response of what do you mean for the attack? <laughs> Shit, okay. I'll go. I will slither back to my friends post haste. Haste. Okay. That would be nice. What are you doing when you slither back to your friends? Once I'm back in the doorway, uh, I will, I guess, pop up and release. I'll, I'll throw in Yoka's staff up into kind of across the room and command her to wake up and uh, she, as she does, she like nudges everybody so I'll do this without like talking loud I'll just kind of do this you know and I, as quietly as I can and once everybody's up uh, I don't know well I mean up to them but sort of wake everybody up with Nyoka and yeah and if I have their attention is everybody up <laughs> I'd say so yeah uh, okay. Everyone's up. I'll inform them that there's an ambush being planned. 
a whisper. I would like, <laughs> I'll connect with Inyoka and be like, uh, Inyoka, Igloo. Do, do, do. She gives us the cone of silence. <laughs> Form of Igloo. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I'll let everybody know. Sorry for waking you up. We were, I think we're about to get attacked. There's snake people outside and it's a, it's a organized attack. A multiple assailant or multiple person. I mean, we could just, if they're waiting for us, we could just slid out and eventually <laughs> deal with them. If you prefer, we can leave right now. No, 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 okay. I don't prefer it. No, we, I mean, a, a good rest would be best. Uh, yeah, they said they were waiting and stick around to see for <laughs> <Maybe> I should have. <laughs> I know they're going to attack, though. So. But it's not like if we go out guns blazing, we have an advantage. There, everybody's watching us, so maybe it is best to just wait it out. Up, up to thoughts, thoughts, creep. Thoughts. Yeah, let's just. I, I'd say wait it out. Uh, okay. I want to look for a, like maybe a different exit. And have Pass Without Trace, like, ready to launch on all of us if we need it. So y'all specifically picked this building out because it only had one entrance and exit. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> Get cue the Old West music. <laughs> so it's a shootout. <laughs> Uh, I think the the move is run sprinting out then guns blazing or or I could have like a, a an army of owls care flight us out out of here out the entrance directly to the skies that would definitely probably catch them off guard at least or like they did in uh Harry Potter at the what was it like the last movie where they said all the wizards at once and and to confuse the death eaters and they were all like yeah they all they're all hairy decoys. yeah everybody's hairy so kind of like the owls come out uh Uncilian, you don't have maybe like a, an, an illusion maybe that you could create no Nothing like nothing I like can that. only I can only camouflage from the eyes and not yeah. really deceive the eyes. I mean that's good. That's not nothing. That's that is good. Uh, so Ancillion's taken care of. Uh, not so much. I creep. could make two of us invisible. I mean, I think if you increase. Could do that. Maybe we could. I mean, we could try this. It worked before. Right. Yeah, looking towards to Creed, what he thinks. Yeah, Creed. Yeah, let's give it a shot. Sorry. Uh, yeah, then, like, she would, like, go over, extend uh, a leech. It, like, like it, it bites him quickly, but it, immediately he becomes invisible. Nice. And so does she. That is my last third level slot for today. Did any of us get benefits from the rest or no? Uh, the long rest is not completed yet, no. Okay. But I got my we made a totem. short rest, so I got my inspirations back. Good. I got my totem. So if shit goes down, yeah. we're at least got some, some uh, what's it called? Uh, when it confuses the enemy, the, we've at least got some interference. I'd running. say, I'd say, like with with the move, she would also not only make him invisible, but also give him a body inspiration, which lasts for ten minutes, can be used for uh, any d twenty roll, yes, and also for magical damage or magical healing. Yes, 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 yes. B8. 
which by the way also includes initiative <laughs> if that's any help so, okay and the way i want to arrange us it's gonna go like uh owl owl the one they're riding can be the third owl and then one more decoy owl and then i will be on the fifth owl and then the subsequent owls <laughs> okay Ow, ow, ow. Ow, 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 ow. Ow, ow, So, <laughs> you cast your spell. Are you... Inyoka is out right now. Or do you still want Inyoka out? She is, but we'll... I, I'm going to call her back. Wait, let's... She doesn't need to deal with this. Okay. So, you said... People are on the third... Yeah. And the fifth. fourth and fifth. Well, the... oh, okay. So you guys don't have to be together for invisibility to work. We're good. You can be on. Oh, he already cast a spell. Nice. Yeah. It's just uh, w touch once, and if 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 we if I wanted to like, do the same thing for all of us, so like then. <laughs> Uh, like we established last time, the one that's not being made invisible has to carry the one who should also be invisible. Okay. <laughs> that then would require us sticking together. <laughs> but no, we're, we are individually invisible. So yeah, one, two, three, five, and seven. We'll be on three, five, and seven. Okay. So, okay, yeah. You cast your spell... Your owls are somehow Bolted able to... It. They just poof into existence inside the building. Yeah. It's, that's how the spell works. Um, <laughs> and y'all load up on the owls, getting ready to just fly and barrel through the door and fly yes. away. Uh, sprinting, so like uh, 100 feet of movement. Just brrr, burst Dash, open dashing, doors. Yeah. T Tazala shouts in military go 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 <laughs> okay so as y'all uh, do that the first one boom the, d the door explodes and flies out of the way with a owl flying out and then a, a second one flies out and then the third one flies out and so from your perspective, that's what you see as you guys are like getting ready to go. Uh, and the way that has to like, cause the owls can't really fly indoors cause there's so many gigantic owls in here that they kind of have to wait. And then they have to like take a second to like get to take flight once they get out of the door. So, while that happens, a arrow comes flying in. All right, hold on. Shit, I need my totem. Did you did you put your totem out? I, I didn't. I didn't. I, need, I want to though, whenever we can. Well, I mean, y'all are gonna. I, I'm pretty sure y'all are gonna be able to get away. Uh, but the first one comes out and the first owl has two arrows shot at it. I think both of those hit, uh, for eight plus nine and five plus seven. So I think that completely kills it, right? They only have like 19 health. Yeah. I don't see any. Uh, numbers. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, I was. I had the talking to myself on. Yeah, it was a 15 to hit on the first shot for yeah. eight piercing and nine poison, and then a 20 to hit yes. on the second shot for five piercing and that seven poison. It. Yeah, that'll do it. If it's the same owl that that, that does it. Yeah, those were to, those were both to the first owl. Yeah. And then to the second owl that comes out a second volley of arrows. Is shot. Montez. 
Okay, 11 so plus... So a total of... 6... Okay, he's still up, though. Okay. So that one's out, and it now takes flight, having taken uh, a bunch of damage. And then the third one that comes out gets two shots at it. And they these are all aiming for the birds, because that's yes. the biggest thing that they can see. Okay. Uh, that is a... 19 to hit on the first one, and yes. then a... In this case, God, I think technically all of these would have advantage because they're un- it's from an unseen attacker. Like, y'all don't know where the... The birds don't know where the shot is coming from. Okay. So that would also be... That would also hit... So that's 16 plus 17. So that... The third bird poofs out of existence. So and I think that one. is the one that is holding greed. It's okay. Uh, Evan, do I have a mental connection to these birds? Oh, but he's invisible, though. I think so. Yeah, like, they don't... They didn't shoot at Creed because he's invisible and the bird's the big thing. But Creed's bird poofs out of existence. Creed, you are now outside the lake. Wait. Birdless. What are y'all doing? Um, so, as a, as a question, because I was kind of unsure on on that, with no, like the 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 shot comes from farther away than uh, sixty feet, right? Um, in this case, no, they didn't. So they're closer than sixty feet. Yeah. Like. Is there any chance that as we're storming out that, like, we could see where those are coming from? Or, like, is, is it also not visible to so us? So the only person that? who could have seen it is Creed, because he's the only one that's gotten out the door. Ah, uh, fuck. Yeah, well, I was... I, sorry to which Creed, know. as you have come out the door, you saw... Uh, the arrows that were kind of coming in had a bit of a downward trajectory. And when yeah. you came out the door, you saw that the arrows that were being shot from at you were coming from the rooftop over here. Roof. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Point out one more time. Go down. You guys can't see my ping. Why can't you see my ping? Why can't I see your ping? Uh, right. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. That's why. There. Okay. Happened to me all the time. That's dumb. Why does the ping have to be on a specific layer? Yeah. That's dumb. Who who would you be pinging? On GM layer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, me. Check this out. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the rooftop over here is where that. And I'm I'm still so invisible, up. right? You are still invisible because you haven't been hit by anything. And you haven't done anything to. Drop your okay. invisibility. So I want to start heading that way and see if see if I can get myself in a good position to like surprise attack this the, whatever this is. Okay, so you're moving. Every all the other birds are still following their directive and flying out. Yeah, I need you to stop only three volleys of arrows <laughs> happened. <laughs> So, I think for I think narratively, everyone flies out. The first three got shot. The second one didn't die from getting shot, but the first and third did. And everyone's still piling out and trying to fly. Unless Creed yeah. somehow indicates that. I, I mean, like Ancillion would have, of course. Like we, we all know on which. One oh, you knew it which would one. Have been. Yeah, so you guys would have seen so, Creed's bird. Poof, and I'd say spelled. Ancillion would just uh, like talk to him because they're more or less next to each other. Basically, just say "fuck," try to get on mine, and like, like vaguely reach leeches and arms out in the direction of him. But you're both invisible. 
yeah it the, the idea is more that like if he tries to get on the bird invisibly like she would feel his presence and then could just grab and try to help him creed what are you doing what what do you reach for or are you reaching at all are you going to go investigate where the shots came from i i think i, I was go going to investigate where the shots are coming from but <clears throat> I'm not sure. I think I think I'll um What would Creed do? WWCD. I I would <laughs> definitely be going like I would be trying to like figure out like why like what is happening, you know? Okay. So what what are you doing though? Like what's your action? What are you doing? It's more a question of like like in round initiative, what are you doing right now? Do you try to get on top of the bird that's that comes after yours that just disappears? Or do you want to stand and look around? Yeah, do we need to roll gonna, initiative? I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get on top of the bird. Okay, so you reach out for the next bird. You reach out for bird yep. number four. Yep. And try and get on top of it. Yep. Okay. Uh, are are you saying anything when you do that? No. <laughs> okay. So, uh, the owl's okay with this. <laughs> what is, um, what are Ancillion and Tazala doing then, when they see this happen? Well, well she spoke to him and told him to get on. I, th I think it is the one she's on, right? Yeah. No, the you're on after. five. Oh, I'm on five, so... Well, I can't really help him. Creed, so. reach for the talons! The talons! Somebody will grab you. And I'll, no, uh, I'll mentally... Mentally, I'm gonna have all the owls be kind of... Uh, you know, the, the grab machine, the, the prize machine, claw. Everybody just kind of okay. claw, claw. Creed's gonna, when you feel something, lock on. And let's get out of here. Go, 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 go! Right. Y'all... <laughs> Get out, because there was only three volleys. Uh, Y'all are able to... Everyone's out the door and takes flight. We'll have one more volley at y'all before you are out of range. At, at that point, we can see where the shots are coming from, right? At that point, you will definitely be able to see where the shots are coming from if you're looking. Okay. And they're all on top of the roofs. There's three... There's three uh, there's a few different like roofs around you, mm -hmm. and one on each roof. So and at, at, at which all are they shooting at? Two of them are going to shoot at the one Tazala is on because that's the only person that they can see is actually riding one. Mm -hmm. And one is uh, let's see, we've got the six left. Roll a d6. Tazala or someone else? I'll roll it. Okay. Uh, they are shooting at, let's see, it was one, or no, one and three are gone, so it's two and four. So they are shooting at uh, two. Or no, I guess two was is now one. So they're shooting at the one Creed's on. Okay. Which is four. No! Roll. Okay, so Roll it. for the for the four shots against Tazala, these are at disadvantage because it is beyond their sixty foot range, uh, which oh, I them? will say toggle. Oh no, range one fifty to six hundred feet is the longbow. Yeah. So these are not at disadvantage. But but the question is, are we still within sixty feet of them though? Did you want to do something while you were within sixty feet? No, it's it's basically. I'm just asking if I have the chance to silvery bobs one of them if need be. That well, the dash of the birds was a hundred feet, right? Yeah, fa yes. fair enough. So yes. like we would be out of range. So just gotta pray. <laughs> okay, so four shots. So a sixteen to hit, a twenty to hit. An 11 and a 9. All the same bird? 
the 16 that was those were all on you yeah jeez okay so, so my bird's 15 gone. um and then on creed's bird a 16 to hit and a 7 to hit i'll just so have that's like 18 damage the next one so the the one that took 18 is still up. So Creed's is still up. Mine's down, and I'll just, like, try to... So Creed begins to... Free, free fall. Or no, not Creed. No, it's Zala. It's Zala. Mentally yeah. commanding the next owls to sw swoop me up. I'm falling, falling, falling. Okay. Scoop, scoop. Hoot, hoot. You... Let's see. Yeah, we'll say... You know, your birds are agile enough to be able to to turn around and dive bomb to catch you. Yes. One right behind me. But uh, how many do you want following after you? Because this is going to, because they have to turn around and, and go down and catch you, there's going to be another round of attacks to potentially shoot at you. Could it just be the one that was after me? Uh, yeah, we could have it would, just be the one. So it wouldn't have to turn around. It would be like like it saw me fall, and then like it was already behind me. Like and then zoop, like the the other ones were in front of me. Um. Yeah. So as the bird, roll me a um, an acrobatics check to see if it can. It is nimble enough to be able to grab you. We'll say DC 13. Yeah, it's able to, without without missing a stride, it's able to grab you and continue on. And you are able to continue on your path away from the ambush. No more, you, you are out of range. Well, actually, if you're still dashing, there's, it's a 600 foot range. They're, they're gonna try for one last round at disadvantage now, because you're beyond the 150 range. Uh, again. Could, okay. Could I see? Like the totem would be useful. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Just. Okay. Okay, so two of them are firing at the first one that was initially damaged, and one of them is firing at the one Creed is rolling is is currently on. These are all disadvantaged. So twenty two, I think that one hits. So the first one is gone. So the second one wouldn't have shot at the first one. So I'm gonna roll another d six. So it's going to shoot the last one, which I think is the one you're currently on, Tazala. So this is for the second one, the one that Creed's currently on. 22 hits. No good. Uh, which I think that one only had like one HP. So Creed poofs and is now falling. Which position is he in? He was in position four. So there's, is there one free one behind him or he's gone? Well, there was one free one between, oh no, the one that was, that was ahead the of one me. that's available is the one that's ahead of you. It's in between you and Ancillion. Okay. How, how high up are we again? Now you're approaching like 300 or so <laughs> feet off the ground. <laughs> good, good, good. Oh no, 200, because it, it was two rounds of dashing. So 200 feet, yeah. I mean, that's only 20d6 damage. <laughs> that's nothing. Uh, so after, let me do roll the last attack against um, the one that Tazala is on. Uh, Ooh, wait, could I pass without trace? Would that work? 
in the sky? That's for stealth. Never mind. No. Just checks. Does 14 hit your bird? Four teams. Oh, wait. No, we need to it. Oh, it hits. Uh, so 12 damage to your bird, which I think is undamaged currently. Undamaged. So down to five. Okay. And so there is one available bird. Roll me an acrobatics check, the same as it was for you. Come on. To Zala. Can I, can I help? DC 13. Guidance? Come on, acrobatic. I think you're currently concentrating on the... Oh, the, never mind. Uh, yeah, obviously. Uh, uh, it's not an advantage, so that's a nine. Uh, is not agile enough to catch Creed initially, so now we've got to do a dive. Is it, is it silver? A dive enough bombing. To be <laughs> could, could he. Uh, okay. Uh, yes. Creed's falling. Creed's Hopefully, not to my death. Falling. Am I am I over water, Josh? No, you're not. This is not good. I would so, like to re-roll that. Can I on myself or no? Figure can I, I use inspiration? And I'm, using I'm using my action. I'm using my action. What's your action doing? Okay. You magically distract the triggering creature and turn its uncertainty into encouragement. Seventeen. <laughs> you're it's you're making it use the lower roll. No, I, I whichever one I oh use the lower roll. Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! It's not like luck. Yeah. How do I like, forget how simple things work? So, never mind. so there, there will be an opportunity for it to catch Creed, but now it's in a full dive bomb trying to catch up to him. So this round, it is uh, essentially dashing to catch Creed, but it comes back within the short range of the longbows. So Creed, you're caught by the bird and it arrests your fall about a hundred feet off the ground. Okay. Is there anything you want to do with this time to help the bird before the shots? You see, I I'd like to like Yuan see if I could use. Like, can I use my arrows? Can I use my shield to like try to block some of these? Yes. All right. Oh, I'd like to do that. You want to try and take some of the shots for the yeah. bird? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so we've got six shots at this bird, since you are the closest, and they see their prey within sight. So that is a 15 to hit and a 7 to hit. I think the 15 so, hits. So if you're, if you're putting yourself in front of the bird... Do we use my armor class? We are not using your armor class. You're just taking a damage for bird. Okay. So you would take 10 piercing and five poison. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. This is good. <laughs> Second shot uh, is 12 and a nine. The 12 is the AC, right? So that's seven piercing and poison. Do you want to take that? Creed. Seven piercing and five damage or five poison. Yeah. Are you taking that? Yeah, I'm working on it. Hold on a second here. And then... So that's 12. A 16 and 8. And 15 off of it. Uh, so the 16 hits the third. So it's 3 piercing and 5 poison. So it's only 8 damage on the last volley. On the last one. Okay. Okay. And your bird is unhopped. Okay. But now bird must climb. Cool. The rest of you are out of range, but... One last round of shots against Creed before he will be out of range. And these are at disadvantage now. 16 hits, so 5 piercing and 11 poison. Are you taking that damage, Creed? Yeah. Okay, so, so take 16 points. 
Second round is a 15 hit and a 13 to hit. So the we'll take the the lower of the two. So we'll do two piercing and nine poison. Okay. So I'm incapacitated. Well, so you want the bird to take the hit? No, that uh, is, then you would be yeah, incapacitated I mean, plus dead. So, so so before so while the bird is climbing, if you need to if you want to use an action to like heal yourself, yeah. You I mean, I'll just time. throw I throw all my all of my um, lay on hands uh, lay on hands on myself so where is that how much features do... and traits it's like five times your level I think yeah I just don't know if I I thought I had like something to like calculate how much I've used I don't know if I used any I, don't know I think you, you used five to heal poison in the fight against the veggie pygmies. The uh, yes, yeah. There was there was some poison that I used. Um, I don't remember you using any in Wongo's shrine. So I think you're just down five. Yeah. So minus five. So it is. Uh, we're six. So that'd be. I'll add twenty five to this so that will bring me to 34 okay and then how much damage so What's then this? you need to take 11 points so that'd be and then you need to take uh 